What's up, House of Hope fam? It's the Flavor King, and welcome back to another edition of Cooking with Flavor KL. Today, we're going to make a blueberry delight. Man, this is a childhood favorite. Uh, my friend Ainsley, man, he loves this stuff. So we're going to have a pecan and graham cracker crust pie, uh, bottom of pie crust. We're going to have some Cool Whip and cream cheese filling, and then we'll have that blueberry uh, pie filling on the top. It's a light and summery dessert. Man, a crowd pleaser. Let's get those spatulas, guys. Let's go. Okay, um, Flavor Gang, this is what we got. This is going to be all of our ingredients for our pie crust for the Blueberry Delight. We're going to have a fourth cup of sugar, one stick of melted butter, pecans that's been finely chopped up in my food processor, two um, things of uh, cream cheese, some graham cracker crumbs, Cool Whip, and then we're gonna have two cans of that um, blueberry compote, the, the blueberry pie filling. That's what we're gonna have right there, okay? We got our um, nine by 13 dish. So we about to get ready to put this thing together, okay? We're gonna put this in the oven on 350 degrees for about eight minutes. We're gonna mix these um, graham cracker crumbs and these uh, pecans and butter and sugar together and form our base, okay? Okay, uh, okay guys, we're back. Now we're gonna put this pie crust together. So there's not, there's no measurements to this really, but I say, you know, you put in maybe two cups of uh, graham cracker crumbs and add in your pecans. I say that's about a fourth of a cup, third of a cup of um, the pecan crumbs. I like the so I'm gonna add more. And then we add our sugar, one fourth cup of sugar to that. And that's just gonna help that pie crust um, get a little sweetness to it. And then we're gonna mix that up. Mix that, combine all of those together, the pecans, the sugar, and the graham cracker crumbs. And what you're looking for, we're gonna add that butter to this, and we're gonna make it a little paste that we can build our graham cracker, our pecan graham cracker crust with, okay? That's what we're gonna do. You see it? It's all mixed up now. And then we're gonna add our uh, melted butter. A little bit at a time. We don't want that, we don't want this pie crust to be too wet. We just want it like a little paste. We'll mix that in. Now, once I get the pie crust right, you know, it's gonna start to crumble up like that. And you're gonna see that that's what we're looking for. That right there, okay? That's the kind of consistency we're looking for. We're gonna keep on mixing this. I may add a little bit more of the butter. All right, that's about it. This y'all, it's just about a stick of butter. Might as well just go ahead and put that little bit on in there. Stick of butter. And we're gonna just keep pulling those crumbs together, making our, cream, our graham cracker pie crust base. That's what we're gonna do. When I come back, I'll show you how to um, get it in the pan and uh, mold it, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you how to mold your um, pie crust into your um, pan. Basically, you know, hands are clean already. You just wanna smash that down in there. You wanna make sure the pie crust is even. You don't want one side thicker than the other. We want to make a nice, even pie crust at the bottom. Because when we bake this, this will get a little firm, and then we'll add on our toppings and stuff like that. So while this is in the oven, 
we'll start working on our Cool Whip and Cream Cheese Philly. Okay, so that's kind of what you want to see right there. That's what you want it to look like. Okay. Now we'll be back. Um, blueberries are already in the bowl, ready to spread out, but you can do this. This recipe is so versatile. You can do it with just about any. You can do it with strawberries, bananas. I have one with I do with lemon, um, chocolate. You can do whatever you want with it, but look, very versatile dessert. Uh, when the pie crust is about to come out, we're gonna let that cool while we make our cool whip and cream cheese uh, mixture, okay? All right, guys, so look. Our crust is done. You can smell those pecans that were in that bacon, that butter, you can smell those graham crackers. We're gonna set this to the side, let it cool off, and then we're gonna make our um, our filling, which is our cream cheese, cool whip, and a little bit of sugar we're gonna add to that, and we're gonna mix all that together. One thing we want our cream cheese to be is extra soft. We want it to be extra soft so we're able to make it smooth and creamy and not that lumpy inside of the um, mix. So look, I have one of the um, cream cheese and we put the second one in and we gotta get all that stuff out of there. All right. So we're gonna get that out. We're gonna mix our, we're gonna mix our cream cheese up first. You want this to be extra soft. Uh, I may add some um, heavy whipping cream to it just a little bit to loosen it up, but that's totally optional. Scrape down my bowl and add in the um, Cool Whip. Yeah, that's nice and soft. That's just what I was looking for. And we're gonna add a little bit more sugar to this. Um, three quarters of the way done already. friend Ainsley, man, he loves this. He called me on his birthday and said, hey, can you make this for me? It was his 50th birthday. So I told his wife how to do it. I'm not sure what happened with it, but she got the ingredients and she got the direction from the king, man, from the flavor king. So he got it for his birthday. Wasn't able to get it out there to him. He lived all the way in Canada. So, so yeah, that's what it looks like. Okay, good to go. It's ready for the pie crust. We're gonna, gonna put this in the pie crust. Then we're gonna layer uh, a layer of pecans on it and we're gonna put our blue our blueberries on top. Right, so look, we're gonna add our filling to the pan. So look, I use pecans in the, um, in the crumb and I'm gonna sprinkle some on the top. But look, if you have somebody in your family that has a nut allergy or any of that, then just leave out the Leave out the pecans. You can do it. You can make this, this this recipe your own. You can do it however you like to do it. Just make it, cater it to you, and and the folks that you're cooking it for. Um, once we get this all situated, we're gonna put this in the refrigerator and let these ingredients set for like two hours to overnight. Overnight is optimum, but. If you gotta get it out and get it in a hurry, two hours is gonna be just fine. It'll set. You know, you want the blueberries to be cold, the, the cream cheese and Cool Whip to set. So, and also let that crust harden up. Now, since I like pecans, I'm gonna add some more pecans on this layer right here. Just add some chopped pecans to it. Not a lot, but just some more pecans. I like that crush that it gives, that earthy, nutty flavor. And then we'll add our blueberry mix to the top. And guys, there you have it. That's our blueberry delight. And like I said, you can use this 
You don't have to use blueberries. You can use any kind of fruit. Pineapple, strawberry. Okay, so now that's set. We're about to go stick this thing in the fridge and we'll be back to show you the finished product. Okay guys, now we're gonna put our um, pie in the refrigerator. We're gonna let it chill for two hours. And we're gonna come out a piece. I wanna get a good piece with that crust so you can see that crust on the bottom. Great. And that's a great white, fluffy, delicious dessert right there. I promise you. Let's taste it. Let's give it a taste. You see, you got that pecan, graham cracker crust, the um, cream cheese and um, Cool Whip center, blueberry pie filling on the top. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Ah, oh. that's, that's some good stuff right there, guys. Like I said, you can go ahead and you can make this. This is 20 minutes um, prep time, the two hours in the refrigerator. Are you ready? what your grandmother had done. Saved money for six months, paid off debt, slept on the floor. And because of this conversion moment, you literally are sitting on the board of a bank that wouldn't have even given you a loan. I was a pastor of a church. I was spending so much money dressing like a preacher, driving preacher cars. If I'm, <laughs> if I'm spirit filled, the same Holy Ghost that makes me shout can make me wait. Wait until I can afford a BMW and stop giving money, donating money to big banks, paying them 18% interest for the right to use their credit card to buy something I can't afford. It's a mentality. Did anybody ask for the most delicious, moist cake ever, full of spices? Yeah, we're gonna be making this carrot cake, all right? So we'll be back and we're gonna get right into it. You know how we, we modern people, we use the vegetable peeler. Instead of you doing this, I went back to the old way, the way my aunt used to do it, cleaning those potatoes. Just take a knife and just shave it along the edge and you, you would not use a lot of excess carrots. And just Shave that right off, go all the way around. This carrot cake is a labor of love. I mean, you're gonna have to do a lot of shredding and grating over there. And when you come to the little nicks, just turn the sharp edge of the blade and just go right through there like this and just shave that off. Okay, we guys, we're back. So here's the ingredients that we're gonna to need to make this um, carrot cake. So we're gonna need uh, three cups of cake flour, three cups of sugar, two cups of vegetable oil, six eggs, a tablespoon of um, cinnamon. Now you can use either cake flour or you can use the self-rising flour. Either one is up to you. And for the oil, you can, if you don't want to use the two cups of oil, you can use three sticks of softened butter, okay? 
Um, once we get, we'll add in these ingredients and then we'll add in our carrots and then our um, walnuts. Uh, for the icing, you're gonna use a, a half a pound of uh, powdered sugar, one package of cream cheese, one stick of butter, and a teaspoon of van um, van vanilla. Gonna be, we're back. We're gonna go ahead and start adding the ingredients into a bowl for our cake. We have three cups of shelf rising flour, three cups of sugar, a tablespoon of cinnamon, six eggs, and um, two cups of oil, vegetable oil. Okay, we're gonna put all of the ingredients in there together and then we'll combine it. Uh, we'll probably let this mix for about three or four minutes until you get like a peanut butter consistency maybe. Okay. Then once we get this combined, we'll, we'll scrape down the bowl, and then we'll add in our carrots and then our nuts. Okay, guys, so look, we have our cake pan. We're gonna flour it. So you just wanna turn your cake flour around in the pan, get the edges. Don't worry about that mess, we'll get it up. And then, you know, you wanna get the little stem in the center. And uh, that's how you're gonna flour your cake pan, okay? So we're gonna get the rest of this um, cake batter ready for the pan. Okay, so guys, now I've scraped down my bowl. I'm gonna add four cups of carrots. I'm gonna add four cups of carrot to the mixture. And stir that in. And then we'll add the uh, nuts. Uh, also, guys, if you got nut allergies or anything like that, then you can definitely skip adding the nuts to it and just go with the carrots. You can add pineapples to it, raisins or anything else. So you don't necessarily have to be with nuts, okay? Okay, now we're gonna add a cup of uh, nuts to the mix. And then we'll let that um, mix up for about a minute. Okay, so our uh, cake mix is complete. Just scraping down our paddle. And this is what we have inside. Now, now we're gonna add it to our cake pan. Our cake is in the pan, and we're gonna go in the oven at 350, hour, hour and 15 minutes, or until your skewer comes out clean, okay? So you wanna place that in the center rack, and I set my timer for 115, for one hour, and then I check it. Okay, so look, we got about 15 minutes in our oven. We're gonna start on our icing. Uh, what I have in the bowl already is a pack, the package of uh, cream cheese and one stick of butter. We're gonna cream that together and we're gonna add in our confection sugar. Okay, uh, we added in half of a pound of the uh, confection sugar. And we're gonna put this on stir. And then once they get incorporated, we'll go ahead and speed it up and then I'll add in a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, so I'm gonna add in a tablespoon of vanilla extract. And we're gonna mix this some more. About another minute. Cake is out of the oven. 
I'm gonna let it cool in the pan for about 15 minutes. Okay guys, the moment of truth, we've turned this cake upside down. It's come out the oven, set in the pan for 15 minutes. It released out pretty good. And now we're gonna let it cool down and we'll apply the ice. All right, guys, the cake is out the oven. It's cooled down. Now right, we're gonna, the moment of truth. We're gonna cut into this um, carrot cake and let you see how moist it is on the inside. Uh, okay, so there we go. That's it coming out. See, it's very moist. You can see the layers in there. You got your nuts, the carrots. You got the flakes from that cinnamon. Hey, let's go. Good eats right here. Let me get me a fork and I'll let y'all know. Okay, guys, let's go in. Let's see what this carrot cake, man. It looks so delicious. It smells good. Mmm. Nice and warm. Got the crunch from those walnuts. And carrots is went in there good. Got the icing, the sweetness from the icing. Man, this is a good piece of cake right here, guys. Look. I'm gonna try my Auntie Merck carrot cake. Well, y'all, you won't be sorry. All right, guys, so today I'm making some caramel. Uh, what I'm doing right here is I've melted one stick of butter. I have a cup and a half of uh, heavy whipping cream, uh, two tablespoons of vanilla, and a tablespoon of salt, um, sea salt, and I'm gonna melt this. This is gonna be the first half of the caramel mix. And uh, once I get the butter melted down, um, I'll let this cool, and we'll move over into our um, caramel mix with our sugar and water. Okay, so guys, this is the um, second part of my caramel mix. Uh, we have the first part done. We let that sit down and get room temperature. Right here, I have a quarter cup of water, and I'm gonna add to it a cup and a half of sugar. And this is gonna make the most awesome caramel that you ever taste. No more, I'll put my flame on a medium high heat, and you can stir a little bit, but at the beginning, but after that, just leave it alone, let it sit there, resist the urge to manipulate your caramel. Because if you do that, it's gonna crystallize and you'll have chunks. So um, once you just get all of the water incorporated with the sugar, you just um, let it sit. Um, like one of the, some of the stuff that you, you should do is have your your equipment and utensils already there. So I have a little uh, brush that I'll use to brush down the sides with a little bit of water. You just paint the sides so you can get the um, sugar down, back down in the bowl, in the pot. So that's it, that's all you wanna do with it. And right now it's on this medium high heat and we're gonna let that go until it turns a nice amber brown. And once it turns amber, I'll slowly add my mixture to the caramel and whisk it until I get the desired uh, color in my uh, caramel. So that's it. This part takes about 10 minutes, so we'll cut the video short. Thank you. Okay, so as you guys can see, we, it's starting to brown. We're starting to get that amber color, and you don't want to stir your caramel at this time. So what we can do, let's give it a swish, a good swish around, just to even that out, and um, we'll put it back on there. Um, we'll let that color up for about two or three more minutes and we'll come back. Right here in this part, we're gonna have a real big science I I issue right here because we're about to put warm buttermilk into a hot caramel and we're gonna get some popping and stuff going on. So be careful on this stage. Okay guys, so what we're about to do now is um, slowly Start to drizzle the um, buttermilk. Whisk, whisk, whisk slowly. 
keep whisking. Slowly. Now we have, I have the heat off. I'm gonna turn it back on a real low simmer. Very low. And you can see, we got that caramel going. I mean, you can use this on almost anything. I'm making it for a cake, but you can dip the apples in it for Halloween. Uh, you can cover up some pecans with it or put it on, on cupcakes or in icing or whatever. So, yeah. So now we'll let this hang out for about two to three minutes till we start to get the little bubbles back in it and uh, we'll turn the heat up. Okay, guys. So it's been two, it's been about three minutes um, on a low heat. I'm going to take the caramel now and transfer it to my glass bowl to assist with the cooling down process. And then it's gonna thicken up also. But yeah, look at that caramel. Mm, homemade caramel. Just like that. Mm. Hey, Flavor Squad. I wanna thank you guys again for tuning in and watching my channel. Um, look, like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Peace.